Hello everybody, welcome back to Friday's video. Standing in amongst the Cosworths here. The yeah. never-ending Cosworths. <laughs> Haven't been able to do anything for a day, mate. No, I've seen you um, sort of stewing. Been waiting stewing for, up. well, I can crack on with that. But I've, been, I've spent two days doing the Figaro's. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. It's one of those jobs. Love, the, love doing the Figaro's. Yeah. It's great. A lot of blasting involved. Got to get them all clean. Um, the boys are sending us four at a time now. So it's one of those jobs where you can't really do a bit here and a bit there. You'd be doing it for weeks, wouldn't you? You may as well just get it all over and done with. Crack right on. So have, have I've a managed Figaro to... Figaro week, innit? Figaro week. Two Couple days, days mate. not yeah. too bad really. Yeah. John's checked and polished all the cranks, they're all good. Uh, the four blocks I blasted faced the tops. Got very overheated, these things. <laughs> they, Bit bent. Two of them, you've, I've took half a mil off. Bloody hell. So hours. I've just wrote on the top. The, the last lot were the same. They seem to get yeah. really warm, these things. And the bores, they're, they're sort of open deck really at the top yeah and they just distort like buggery um they're not turbo or anything are they i think they are aren't they are they i think they so are. that's probably why they're so bad then probably so we've done all the blocks um bored them all i've honed two i've just got to hone the other two and then the blocks are done cranks are done uh that is the blocks down there so you can see they look a lot better yeah. The far block there, we've got two broken head studs in that block, which is a lovely job. They're about an inch down and about two inches of thread. Oh. So I'm going to have to set that up on the mill on Monday and try and drill those out straight. That'll be fun. Uh, so we'll come to that in a minute. That's looking beautiful, isn't it? It is. So if we head outdoors. Outdoors? Oh, we've got all the other. Outdoors. Uh, this is the box that's got to go. That is the Cosworth that hasn't yet left. Oh, yeah. So here's all the boxes. So what we've done, we've cleaned the boxes and we've got the, the crank cradle there, the main cradle, which we've blasted all of those, clean them up. You're just going through changing the pistons on the rods. Yep. I'm going to start on that in a minute. So. All the cranks are in each of their boxes. So we're trying to keep them all individual and um, in the correct boxes. Yeah. Um, one thing also that we do is blast and sort out the rocker shafts so these come yeah. in fairly dreadful so we blast these and clean them all up mate it looks a lot better makes than it, it all a bit nicer did. for them to assemble doesn't it yeah um, and they're very grateful for that box of old bits so yeah been cracking on with that and i'm quite happy i've managed to get most of it done in a couple of days really john's gone through all the oil pumps as well hasn't he? oh has he i think so. saved you a job yeah uh so back to the cozies the reason we were on hold on this one so this is, that's the Sierra, the one owner job. This is the uprated one that's going in the rear wheel drive escort. Nice. Um, the reason I was on hold here, mate, is the thrust washers. Oh, right. So this is one of those things where it would be quite easy to assume. And we all know what the uh, mother of all F-ups are. Assumption. There you go. Right, so we always check the M-flow. Got to be honest, nine times out of ten, more than that, I'd say 98% of the time, even, with, even if the crank's been ground, you don't have to grind the thrust faces, so they run standard thrust bearings are always no, good always enough, really. Good, yeah. I try and run about four or five thousand end float. Yeah. And the, the way we check the end float on this one, got a DTI gauge on the end of the crank, okay? And what you're checking for is the movement of the crank backwards and forwards with the thrust bearings in. Yeah. Okay, so if I get a lever bar, which is not in there. I think I've got it, mate. He's nicked it. I've nicked it. He's had it. I have. Where's that lever bar? Where's that bloody lever bar? So if we have a look at the gauge down here, mate, what we do is just stick this in between a web very carefully and we move it one way then t'other and you can see that is we zero that look that is on the zero backwards 
And if I move it forwards, look, we've got about four, four and a half hour end float on that, which is absolutely perfect. Proper job. Checked this one with standard thrusts in before I even put the main caps on. And let's see what we get here, shall we? Interesting. So it's quite an easy check, really. That yeah, pretty easy could, check, but a lot of people won't run, check it and just yeah. assume that that's, you know. Could go unchecked quite easily. Now, this, this um, crank is, John's had to grind it, but it is 0.5 on the mains, so it was at 0.25. Yeah. John didn't grind the thrusts. So if we have a look at that, that is on zero now. Okay. If I push it the other way. Oh, bloody hell. We've got. What we've got there. Quite a bit. We've got about 16th hour of end float. Too much. Far too much. There we ain't. We've got about 15th hour of end float. Yeah. So basically, whoever ground this cramp before was ground 2.5 on the mains, yeah. standard on the thrusts. Um, they've left it standard on the thrust, but they've also, they must have, a, must have had an issue with the thrusts because they've ground the two thrust faces about five thou aside. Right. Okay. So what we do, mate, and Ford do a point or well, five thou oversized thrust they also do a two thou yeah and i'm pretty sure they do three four do they do any undersizes or no no because normally funnily enough the metal didn't grow well no but i've had it on a few of them a series motors you end up with for some reason standard thrusts you end up with um like no end float yeah well so. in that case and it's the same with these if you if they do a two and a five thou, which I think is what they do, but you need them, uh, you only need them sort of three or four thou bigger, then you can go two thou and surface grind them down yeah. on the backs. So if you see here, look, the thickness, you've got the coating, yeah, which yeah. is very thin, and then you've got a steel back in. What we do, set that up on the surface grinder, just tickle grind the back, down, don't yeah. we, mate, till we get the... You could do it on the stand, like if you was, you could do it on the standards, really. Um, do it on any, yeah. So, measuring the standard thrusts, 92 thou thick, that's what they are. I remember that actually off the top of my head. And these ones here are a lot, 97. Right. So it's five thou yeah. side bigger. We want to close that up from 15 to four and a half, five. Five thou side, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Job done. But I I've suppose. had to wait for a day for those to come. I suppose it'd be quite easy to get confused with that and think that you're going to end up with 10 thou or not. It would be. Yeah. So what we'll do here, get a bit of oil. Now, what we've got to be, he's had the oil. I've had the oil as well. Where's my Basically, oil Basically, if you're looking for anything, it's over there. It'll be over there, will it? Yeah. Now, one thing you've got to be very careful with with thrusts, and you probably think, we would have to be pretty careless. Not exactly. Easy to get confused yeah. with putting these in the wrong way round. Yeah. And if you do that, you've got the steel back in running on the steel crank. It's going to scrap it. It's going to get pretty hot So there and do there. make yeah. sure that... What would it do? Would it just chew it up or would it weld itself? It just, it just eats into the face just, of the crank. Yeah. And, then it will sp and then it can... Sp Grab, we've seen it where it's grabbed the thrust, wrecked the crank, yeah. grabbed the thrust, and then screwed itself into the block. Bloody hell. So it ain't pretty, mate. No. So you've got to make sure that the back in is towards the housing. Okay? Yeah. So we're going to feed that one in. Then we're going to push the crank right over that way. Grab the other thrust, look. Yeah. This is what you, I mean, we could just take the crank out, but I'm just, um, this is what we do if you only just took the centre cap off and all the other caps are on. So making sure it's in the right side. We'll feed that in. And we'll check it again, mate. So that's the, the 
plus five thou ones. This is five thou a side now. So if I only wanted to close it up five thou, then you could run a standard one side and a five the other. Yeah. So if we zero that, push it back. Ooh. Spot on. Four and a half five, isn't it? Probably. About that. Yeah, that's that went a bit back. There you go. That five yeah. thou. Bloody perfect, mate. Ideal. So the moral of this story is make sure you do check your end flow. Yeah. If you've got not enough end flow, it could wear the thrusts out very quick and you'd end up with bags of end flow. If you've got too much, you're going to get end flow on the crank, which could cause the same thing. It could cause excess to and fro into the crank. Could it cause like the, the radius in there to sort of snag on the bearing yeah it could do yeah um on some cases not these because the bearing's quite far yeah, from the is, radius is. but on a lot of stuff you've got a big radius that runs very close to the bearing yeah um but also we've heard things um i'll tell you which an engine i'll tell you an engine which was renowned for it was the r32 golf oh right. when they come out is that a vr6 not that volkswagen would admit it mm. but they used to suffer with wearing the thrusts. Oh. Um, I suppose you get clutch problems then. So you've got clutch problems and then you get a knock-in. So the crank's going dong, 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 dong. Yeah. Um, um, I think that if I'm, if I'm right in remembering, Volkswagen actually moved their tolerance up, saying it was acceptable for, I don't know, 12,000, something like that. Where yeah, 25,000, that would It be wasn't, right. because we'd been round and measured a few when they were new back in 2003. Yeah. Um, we've measured the end float, and they've got about 12, 13,000 of end float, obviously where, so where the, the, the knackered material's gone somewhere, yeah. and the thing's knocking. Volkswagen would say it was acceptable. So, so if you're buying an R32, Check, get a DTI gauge and stick it on the end of the crank, check your end float. So is that a 1.8 turbo or a VR6? So the R32... Or is this like... So the R32 Golf yeah. was basically the Mark IV... Mark IV four-wheel drive. VR6, but with... Four-wheel drive, wasn't it? Four valves per cylinder yeah. heads. Right. So pretty much the same bottom end. 2.9, 2 3 litre, something, something like, like that. 3.2. Yeah. Like that. A bit a bored out. Too. Pretty much similar engine. But I like them though, don't you? Oh, awesome car! Always wanted one of an the R32 only golfs I'd have. In that lovely blue, they yeah, do. Yeah, the dark blue. Yeah, you, or yeah, what, the dark, like, yeah. dark blue. Very nice. That's the only golf I think I'd ever have. I know. It's a Mark IV. Lovely car. One of them. So, I've checked it now with a cap off, mate. What I'm going to do is put all the caps on, talk it up. We've got to do our running clearance anyway and I'm going to check it with a cap on just to make sure it's the same if I so do. we're laughing aren't we yeah well guys Friday afternoon and I am on my way home video is due to be put on in about seven minutes but that ain't going to happen um I do want to apologize actually guys because I we all know that um, I usually put out a video on Monday Wednesday Friday about five o'clock but as of late, that has not been happening. We've been putting them on as late as about half past nine at night. So I do apologize, um, but I have been very busy with general life, um, busy at work. So although it doesn't take that long, sometimes when I am not left alone or cracking on with a job, um, I'm not able to get them uploaded or edited and uploaded etc um, within the work hour time frame so I have to wait until I get home by the time I get home I have to bath and put the kids to bed etc so sometimes it's after that but anyway I do apologize I will do my best to uh, stick to the time frame in future so yeah very productive week cracking on with the Cosworths now both got both of the Cosies bottom ends in the same state so we've got the long studs in cranks in etc um, Isaac has almost finished the Morris that is looking absolutely splendid and I'll show you that on Monday um, but 
but yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a strange month really so far. A lot of cleaning and blasting and what have you. We tend to since we've done this uh, the clean room. Whereas before the clean room, I didn't really think about this, um, but before the clean room, we normally had about two, three engines in bits or on the go at once. And as you all know, if we took on more than that, that you had a load where the the um, the car ramp is. It's sort of just waiting to be done but now we can get about eight in bits at once so you tend to find that um, we've got about five or six sort of on the go and then all of a sudden we get four or five finished at once but up until they're finished it feels like we're not getting anywhere you know there's a lot of outgoings at once but then the when we get paid from all the incomings more so before it was sort of smaller amounts out smaller amounts in now it's big amounts out big amounts in so we go through stages where the bank balance doesn't look as great as it sort of should do. Um, a lot of outgoings, and I tend to get a bit peaky about that. But um, it all works itself out in the end, doesn't it? But um, time will tell. In the next year or two, it will. We'll have a look at the figures, the company figures, and see whether it's all uh, working out well enough you know but it's profitable the way we're doing it i should think so it seems to be more efficient now we have less sort of waiting to be done and more in action if you like so um yeah i feel it seems to be working out well the bmw guys that's coming up really well um been sent some photos from ryan the exterior is pretty much in primer now it looks and now it's all in one color you can see how immaculate the shell is so until then guys have a great weekend Enjoy the weather if it stays dry, and um, we'll see you Monday. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys.